I love it. All right, we're live here. This one's going to be all about Google Ads or PPC, whatever you want to call it. I, I hear different names for it. And we've got Gene from Ylopo who runs all of their marketing on the back end, Facebook ads, Google, all the video ads, anything you see on the back end. Uh, G has a large hand in it with a few other people in there. But G, I'm glad to have you on, buddy. And of course, you work for Ylopo. You created Ylopo. And let's get into this Google thing, dude. Why Google? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if, if you looked at new advertising dollars of anyone who is spending advertising dollars online, eight out of $10 that are being spent are spent with Google and Facebook, right? And so if you were to say, okay, I want to generate leads online today, where, where will I put my money, right? There's really only three places. It's one of the portals, it's Facebook, or it's Google, right? And, you know, we all know the different challenges with the portals, how expensive it is, how um, few leads that you get, uh, you know, how you're beholden to them, uh, all the different challenges that are associated with, there, with that, right? Yep. But Facebook advertising, you know, it, it's something that we specialize in. Uh, Facebook has done several case studies on us. We work closely with their team. Um, and it's a great source of leads, absolutely. Um, the, the challenge with Facebook is that you are typically getting people that are earlier in the funnel. And the reason for that is because you are targeting a group of people that are, you hope are probable home buyers, and you're broadcasting to them an advertisement that you think will pique their interest, right? Yeah. And so at the end of the day, what these consumers are doing and what they'll tell you is, I'm just browsing. And then you have to take that conversation and convert it into a home buying conversation. Okay. What's different about Google is that it is a person that is going on Google and typing in homes for sale in Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Francisco. And so when they do that, they are personally taking initiative to start a real estate conversation, right? That so if you can generate a lead from Google, what we typically find is that they're not quite as ready to transact as a portal lead because those people are interested in looking at a specific home. But mm -hmm. these people are what I call mid funnel. They are in the process of researching to buy a property and they're ready to have a real estate conversation. And that's why it is such a great source for agents. And what we're finding is that, uh, that agents are setting um, <clears throat> just as many appointments as they would if they were getting portal leads in a lot of cases, because if they know how to have the conversation of how to get someone who's in the researching stage into someone who is, you know, interested in looking for properties, then they're going to have a high chance of converting. Dude, I, I agree with you on that. So we've been running Google ads since 2000. Dude, I don't even know what tiger, how, how long ago was 2007. that? 2007. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, 2008, I think it was 2008 that I started uh, running Google ads. And uh, with that, I don't think much has changed except they've gotten better. <laughs> yep. That's what I think. Yep. And so we've got the processes down. We use the same processes as, as Facebook, but I think we never go into understanding what that really looks on the back end. And I think a lot of people feel like it might be it might even be more mysterious than what the Facebook ad looks like, right? Yep. Yep. And yep. before you show us, what are your thoughts? Is it more difficult to run a Facebook lead ad versus a Google ad? Yes, definitely, definitely. It's more complicated. <clears throat> and, and the reason is because there are just more layers to Google advertising than there are to Facebook yes. advertising. Okay. On the Facebook side, you're basically saying, I'm going to pick a demographic, uh, you know, people who like uh, horses. I'm going, to sh I'm going to run an ad that shows them, you know, do you want to buy a horse property, right? And in the construction of that advertisement, what are you doing? You're creating a, a demographic target. So that's the, at the ad set level, you're targeting someone. You're creating a ad that is attractive to those people and you're creating a landing page that these people will drive to and convert. Those are three. Oh, there, there was a it. feedback there, but that's all right. We got you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so those are just three separate layers that you can, you can manipulate, right? On Google, you have the concept of 
the keyword that you're targeting, like homes for sale in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You've got the ad, of course, that you are targeting those people with. You've got the grouping of those keywords into what's called an ad group so that you can set the bid economics of how you target those people. Okay. You have campaigns where you set the geolocation of who you're targeting, and then you have the bid optimization strategy of how you're, what, what you're bidding on, what, what you're trying to convert, you know, and, and, and how much you want to pay for all these different variables. Dude, right? it sounds like when I'm running an ad on YouTube, I'm like, ah, oh, right. Well, YouTube is the same platform as, uh, as ad, ad, AdWords. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 so it, it is more complicated. Now, now that being said, what is different about Google and, and better about Google from an optimization perspective than Facebook is that <clears throat> on Facebook, let's say I'm targeting 10,000 people, right? Yeah. Once, all 10,000 of those people have seen the ad that I am running, they are less likely to click on the ad again, right? Because they've already seen that ad. They see the ad again, why would they click on it? Yeah. On Google, every time a consumer looks for a property like, or, or, or a keyword like homes for sale in Los Angeles, that person has never seen your ad before because you're not targeting that person until they've actually typed in homes for sale in Los Angeles, That's right? True. So once you figure out the winning formula of what works, a Google campaign basically just performs, right? So there's minor, so, so the, the legwork of Facebook is, in my opinion, 20% upfront, 80% over time. The legwork of Google is 80% upfront, 20% over time. Dude, so that makes take, total sense. Yep. Yep. Uh, so if you take I, the I time that. to master it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know what? Here, so, so for people who don't understand why, it, it's, it's actually super simple. And that's because when somebody goes on Google, they go to search for something very specific. When somebody's on Facebook, they just happen to find your ad and it's interesting, right? They're not, they're not searching actively on Facebook to go and look for property. And so that's why when we go into this, when we start using long tail keywords, it, it's even more awesome because then you're getting people to, who are looking specifically for something and found you off of it. So yeah, I'm going to send this over to you, buddy. You, uh, you work your magic. Let us know where we're going to start. Sure, absolutely. So, so you know, I, I think the goal today is to really go about the basics of PBC, right? So I'm going to kind of uh, take you guys through the different building blocks of PPC and uh, point out kind of where the gotchas are. Okay. And we're going to go layer by layer, right? Perfect. And if we have time, you know, uh, I'll, I'll show you guys some of the advanced stuff. <laughs> I'll preview oh, for, for, for you some, some other things. Yeah. And, and you know, for, for those of you on here, the, the, you know, I, I'd say what I'm going to show you is the 101 or the 102 of setting up a PPC campaign, running a PPC campaign. Um, you know, for those of you that have already run PPC campaigns, hopefully you learned something here, but I'm going to cover a lot of ground that's, you know, tried and true. Okay. Um, but, you know, uh, we are doing, Tristan and I are doing a webinar. What is it, Tristan? At, uh, at the end of July, right? I think at the 23rd. Yeah. This is 23rd. So this is part one yep. of, of Google ads. And that's part two, because on part two, we're going to be going into showing you what the new Google ads look like, specifically what YLOPO is doing, what, what they're calling Google 2.0, or Google Ads 2.0, or, or PPC 2.0, whatever you want to call it. It's 2.0 version of what we're yep. going to show you right now. Exactly, exactly. And um, let me answer some questions before you get into this, but you can sure. show your screen. Uh, yep. Teresa says, what is PPC? It's pay-per-click. It's just another word for what Google ads are. I mean, they're, they come in, in a variety of names, but that's just what we're going to show you right now, which is paying for ads to show up on the Google algorithm when people search. Right, so it's pay per click as they click on your link, then you pay for it. Now, Amanda has a great question, which is going to uh, launch us into this, G. But for, for newer agents with limited funds, yep. would you recommend Google or Facebook ads? Yeah, 100% Facebook, you know, and, and here's why. Um, a, Facebook is easier to learn, like we just talked about, right? So you can start as easily as pressing the boost button on a post that you create right? Is it the most efficient way to generate leads? No, it isn't. But it's so it's dead simple, right? So on Facebook, they pride themselves on building a platform where it's incredibly easy to use. 
And so if I were a new agent dipping my toes into digital marketing, the ease of use is one factor, right? The second factor is that Facebook advertising is dramatically cheaper than Google advertising. And so typically in a well-optimized campaign, you will get three Facebook leads for every one Google lead. And when it comes to lead gen, we all know at the end of the day, you're going to convert one, two, three. If you converted 3% of leads, you're a rock star, right? So, yeah. so if you convert 1% of the leads you're getting, you're getting a positive ROI on, uh, on your lead generation. And so it's all about how many at-bats do you have, right? So with Facebook, you're going to get so many more at-bats than Google that if you have limited funds, you're new to the game. Personally, me, I would invest it in Facebook. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a, a little more challenging with Google, especially if you're going to try to do it yourself. But that's why we had Y Lopo, dude. Come on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Okay, awesome. So let me see, start with the two most basic building blocks of PPC, which is the keyword that you are bidding on and the advertisements that the consumer sees right? So yep. in this case, I'm in Boston. So I'm, I'm typing in the, the keyword homes for sale in Boston and Maine, right? Yep. Now, if I were a Boston real estate agent, I obviously want to generate more traffic of people looking for real estate in Boston. So I'm going to definitely bid for the keyword homes for sale in Boston and Maine, right? And so yep. in Google parlance, that is what's called a keyword, right? Now, <clears throat> when you bid on a keyword, you're saying, when someone types in this keyword, I want my advertisement to show up to that person, right? So in pairing a key, in bidding on a keyword, you have to pair that with an advertisement. And so this is what a Google ad looks like, right? It's going to have a moniker at the very top, ad. It's going to have the URL that you want to drive the website to. And then it's going to have something along the lines of whatever, what, what's called copy, whatever text you want to put in there buy your new MA home, home listings in X location, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The better you write this ad, the higher likelihood that someone typing in homes for sale in Boston MA is going to click on that ad, right? Yeah. So yeah. one level of Google is you have to choose the right keywords that you want to bid on. And then you're going to want to show the right advertisements to those people who are clicking on those terms that's going to get someone to click on the ad. Right. And, and so just for, for those of you guys, the level set, if you're running your own PPC campaigns, typically if you bid on a keyword and you are able to get a 5% click through rate. So five out of a hundred people who see this advertisement clicks on this advertisement, that is about average, right? So if you get anything over 5%, you're doing really well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, I, 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 you know, we typically see an average kind of good real estate ad as about 8% click-through rate and exceptional ad click-through rate is about 13%. Oh, that's great. Right? I mean, so, that's 13% so, is insane. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. And that's we'll outrageous. show you how we get 13% in, in July 23rd. So that's a oh, teaser, okay. right? <laughs> right. Well, you know what? Well, on that, on that, let me, uh, mm -hmm. let me grab the link and put it up in the chat box. Oh, okay. That way, if people want to jump on that, let me put it up. All right, so if you want to go on and check out our 2.0 webinar, I just put up the link on the chat box, and I'll put it up on Facebook as well. All right, G, continue. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so you've got the two, you know, at the end of the day, you've got the two most important building blocks when it comes to PBC, right? So if you understand that you're trying to target people at the ad group le or at the keyword level, and you're, you're showing them an ad that is relevant, right there, you've got, you've got a basic understanding of how PPC works, right? Okay. Now, before I go show you guys structure, the other twin side of PPC is you've got to have a good experience that these people land on, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is a good PPC experience? A good PPC experience is when someone clicks on this ad looking for Boston homes for sale, they see Boston homes for sale, right? And at yeah. some point, when they're looking at Boston Homes for Sale, you do a registration pop-up that captures their contact information. Now, you, that's the standard IDX home search website, right? Now, right. you can license your IDX website from a lot of vendors. Obviously, what Lopo does it, but you can do it with Real Geeks. You can do it with Sierra Interactive. You could do it with Chime. A lot of different people have IDX websites. Mm -hmm. IDX websites do not, are not all created equal. 
Some of them has a better user design, has a better flow. But the most important thing, and this is the thing you need to ask any of the vendors you work with, is how fast is your website, right? Because on Google, they reward people for speed, right? And the reason for that is because the vast majority of people who are looking on keywords on Google at this point are doing so on their phones. And if you're on an internet connection on your phone, you know that the load time is going to be slower than Wi-Fi, right? So in Google marketing, milliseconds matter, right? So, you know, uh, uh, we, we here at Wailopo, we obsess about how fast the website uh, performance is. And you need to make sure that if you're going to go use a vendor, that they know that is just as important as anything else as it comes to Google advertising, okay? Yep. The whole landing page experience, optimization of that, et cetera, that's a whole different discussion, but I just want to briefly mention that. Well, how so, fast should we be looking for something to load, just so people understand? 300 to 500 milliseconds. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, great. So, you've got keywords. You've got advertisements. Now, we're going to talk about the layers on top of Google, right? So, when you are targeting on Google, the first thing you're going to do when you have keywords and ad groups, or sorry, ads, is you're going to then group them together into what are called ad groups. Why are you grouping together uh, into a ad group environment, in, into an ad group? Because in the Google parlance, an ad group is a grouping of keywords that are similar, okay? So if I were bidding on the keyword, homes for sale in Los Angeles, and home for sale in Los Angeles. Those two are identical concepts, right? And so I'm gonna want to run the same the Google advertisement to both people who are looking for those keywords. And so instead of creating a keyword and an ad, a keyword and an ad, what I'm saying at the ad group level is all of these keywords are very similar and I wanna run the same advertisements all of these people. Therefore, I'm gonna group it together, right? So. Yes. So that's what ad group level is. There's other stuff that you can do at the ad group level, which I'll walk you guys through in a second, but that's the principle here. What is the grouping of keywords that are similar enough that you wanna run a unique advertisement against all of those people? If you wanna run a different advertisement against a, a, a keyword, that's a second ad group, right? So that's the best way to think about it. I like it, all right. Now you're gonna have a lot of, ad, you're, you're, let's say that you build a campaign and you're targeting five different ad groups, right? So let me give you an example. Homes for sale in Los Angeles is an ad group. Houses for sale in Los Angeles is an ad group. Real estate in Los Angeles is an ad group, right? Because for each one of those concepts, I'm going to run a slightly different ad, right? Now, once you have all of these ad groups, you're going to roll them up into what's called a campaign, right? And what a campaign is, is it's a grouping of all of your ads that you want to treat the same from a bidding perspective as well as a targeting perspective. What does that mean? Let's say that I want to only target people who are looking for homes for sale in Los Angeles, but they're typing that in in the state of New York, right? Because people who are looking in New York for homes for sale in Los Angeles will have a higher price point than someone looking for homes for sale in Los Angeles from Iowa City, Iowa, right? Sure. So if I want to target a consumer based on where they started their search from, I have to do that at the campaign level. And if every single ad group underneath that campaign is going to target that audience, they're grouped under my, my campaign, right? So if you want to target people in Los Angeles looking for homes for sale in Los Angeles, and you want to target people looking for homes for sale in Los Angeles, but searching from New York, two ad groups, right? So yeah. that's what the campaign, or sorry, two campaigns. So that's what the campaign level is. There's other ways to think campaign. about campaign. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I have a question here so that Please. people can understand when they're, if they're not going to run this on, on their own and they're going to go to like Ylopo or someone else, they, they would definitely, if they're in a city like LA or New York, Chicago, any of the metropolitan areas, you would definitely want whoever's running them for you to say, hey, can you do me a favor and only pick cities that have home prices that are at least mine or higher? Yep. Right? 
And that I think will help you in the level of quality of leads that you're getting. Like for me in LA, there's no way I want people from in the middle of nowhere to start looking for property in LA, right? I either want New York, San Francisco, Seattle, any of these Miami, right? I have specific cities. And so if they're coming in from anywhere else, I, chances are I don't want them. So just wanted to point that out for people to know. Yeah. And, and, you know, when it comes to Google advertising, like everyone knows, like you search for Los Angeles real estate, Los Angeles homes for sale, houses for sale. Like those are all real estate keywords, right? Mm -hmm. And it's no secret. We all know what I call those pairing keywords, those keyword modifiers are, right? The secret of Google is location targeting and how you structure your campaign, right? And so, you know, you're going to want to choose the right locations that make sense for you. And so, um, you know, uh, the common rule on PPC and just in general is the person that is searching for the most specific location is going to be the highest quality lead. A person that is looking for homes for sale in XYZ subdivision, homes for sale in XYZ school district is going to be higher quality than someone looking for homes for sale in Los Angeles or homes for sale in Los Angeles County, right? Yep. And so another piece of advice is, whether you do this yourself or you hire a vendor to do this for you, make sure that that person is going to drill down to the deepest levels of location targeting, right? There, there are campaigns, I'll show you this. There are campaigns where we are bidding on millions of keywords because not only are we targeting Miami, but we're targeting every neighborhood, subdivision, school district, et cetera, underneath Miami. Right. And some of the, some of the, some vendors like Wailopo does that in an automated fashion. If you do it yourself or you do it with uh, someone who's setting up manually, like an ad agency, just make sure that, that they are getting to what's called the long tail. All of those juicy keywords that are very specific on location. You got it. Perfect, dude. There's some questions here that I want to answer before, but you can leave this here. Uh, one of them is uh, on command. I had it on one of the groups. Now, and command does run Google ads, but uh, just know that they do not run Google ads like what we're talking about here. They're very, they're simple Google ads, right? And just like the same thing with Facebook lead ads. They're, they're simple Facebook lead ads. You can't go in on the back end and change as much as you'd like uh, to, to change all of these things that G is talking about. So just note that. If you do want to go a lot deeper, you'd have to go into a specific company like Wailopo to have them create something like this. All right, G, back to you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so, so at this point, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to show you exactly how to build out a Google campaign, right? Well, just so you know, G went to ads.google.com to go here as well. So this way, people know where you went because some people are like, how the hell, where is this, right? So... Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, go to ads.google.com. You're going to have to create an account with Google, right? Put in your credit card, all this kind of stuff, you know, um, uh, 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 Google advertisement, as I mentioned, a little more expensive than Facebook. It's a little bit more of a hassle to set up initially. Um, so you're just going to have to walk through those steps. But if you type in how to set up a Google ads account, there's a lot of instructional videos on step-by-step -step how you do that. You got it. All right. Let's cool. do it. Okay. So I'm going to start at the campaign level, and then I'm going to take you guys step-by-step step from campaign to ad group to keyword to ads, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, and, and by the way, guys, I mean, this is how Wailopo sets up all of your campaigns, right? So I, I'm showing you guys, you know, how, how a professional organization does this. If you guys want to replicate this on your own, go ahead. I mean, you know, as I mentioned, the secret is how you manage these campaigns. So campaign structure to me is, is, is best practice. It is not necessarily innovation, right? So I'm going to walk you through all of this, but this is exactly how we set it up. So at the campaign level, I mentioned to you, what we're doing at a campaign level is to group all of these ad groups together that you want to set with the same targeting right? So for our client here targeting at uh, Calgary um, in Canada, what we've done is we've created four campaigns. We have G Calgary Geo, Calgary Geo only, Calgary only, and Calgary uh, CA, which is called US, right? 
Here's why we've done that. In the first campaign, Calgary Geo, we are targeting people in the city of, or sorry, in the state of Alberta looking for Calgary homes for sale. Pretty targeted, right? Pretty good audience. If you live in Cal the state of Alberta, or province Alberta, and you're looking for Calgary homes for sale, pretty high quality. The next thing we're targeting is people in the city of Calgary looking for Calgary homes for sale, right? So even more specific targeting. Then in the next group, what we're doing is people in the state or in the city of Calgary, but only targeting one keyword, which is Calgary homes for sale. And I'll explain why we're doing that and why we separated that into a separate campaign, right? And the last one, Calgary US, is targeting any, or sorry, Calgary, Canada, that's why it has CA. This is anyone in the, in the, the, the country of Canada who is looking for, and, and not in the state of Alberta, who is looking for Calgary homes for sale. You see how I've divided each of these out into its different demographic targeting, right? Or location targeting, so that I can bid on each of these groups individual. That is the first step, right? Okay, the second thing that's why you want to group campaigns is that when you have a campaign, you can actually say, I want to spend this amount of money for each one of these campaigns. So let's say that I am our client and I'm saying, you know what? I want to prioritize people who are in the state of Alberta looking for Calgary homes for sale. I can spend $12 a day on this campaign. I want to target people who are in the city of Alberta looking for those keywords, but I only want to spend $2.28. I want to target people who are in the city of Calgary only looking for the key keyword Calgary homes for sale. I want to spend X, Y, Z. So the ability to, to target demographics or geolocations is one aspect of what you can do at the campaign level. The second thing you can do is target and refine the amount of money you want to spend reaching each of these groups. Those are only levers that you can move at the campaign level, right? So those are two unique things you can do. The third unique thing you can do is you can control how, what is the bid or how much you want to, to bid in order to get, to get all these keywords. If you click on the settings section of your AdWords account and you go into the campaign settings, what you're gonna see is a column right here that says target cost per acquisition, right? This is basically me telling Google, how much money am I willing to pay to generate a lead, right? And Google is going to try to optimize against that to try to generate $8 leads for me or $6 leads for me or $10 leads for me, right? And, and so, you know, there are a lot, this is all the advanced stuff. There are a lot of different bid strategies or different ways that you can tell Google, here's how I want to prioritize traffic coming to my website. The most common is manual CPC, which means that I'm telling Google every time someone clicks my ad, I'm willing to pay 25 cents. I'm willing to pay 35 cents. I'm willing to pay a dollar fifty, right? And yeah. then there's more complicated ones from there. Typically what I've, what, what I recommend is always to use target CPA because this is Google using its own algorithms to figure out how to deliver a result for you, right? So on so that, on, on target CPA here on that specifically. Yep. Uh, do you find that, that, that most companies that run Google ads, they don't have a target CPA. They just have a spend, uh, a daily spend or a monthly spend and whatever comes in, comes in. Because I've seen, I mean, you, you and I have seen where yep. it's like $31 a lead, right? Yep. And so I'm wondering, it's a question for me. Yeah. If someone is not able to tell you how they are going to bid and optimize your campaign over time, run, right? If someone basically just says, oh, give me 500 bucks and we're going to see how many leads we can generate for you. That's a real problem, right? You know, usually what happens is they tell you, okay, What's your goal? Well, your goal is to target these locations. Okay, well, you know, some of these locations are gonna be more expensive. Some of these locations are cheaper. My goal for these campaigns, one campaign is gonna be eight bucks, one campaign is gonna be 12 bucks, one campaign is gonna be six bucks. And over time, 
I'm going to make adjustments for you to either hit those goals or to reduce those goals. And, and if, if I can't generate or spend enough money around that, then I'm going to increase those goals, right? The, the conversation of optimization is all around cost per acquisition, right? And so if you don't have the ability to have that conversation with whichever vendor you're working with, that's a major problem. Yep. I agree, dude, hundred percent. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. So let's drill down one more level from here, from the campaign and go deeper, right? So that campaign that I just clicked on um, is the homes for, or sorry, a geo campaign. So this is in the, the province of Alberta, people looking for keywords related to Calgary, right? Now, what you're going to see here is I actually don't have the keyword of Calgary active. I have Calgary campaigns in here, but they're all paused. There's a reason for that. Remember that I actually have an entirely separate campaign just for the keyword of Calgary Homes for Sale. Why would I do that? The reason I do that is because obviously there are more people searching for homes for sale in Calgary than there are searching more than people searching for Cochrane Homes for Sale, right? And yeah. so, or Okotoks uh, Homes for Sale, right? So if I have the word, the keyword Calgary Homes for Sale in this ad group, that is going to dominate the entire campaign and spend most of my budget. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to bid on all of the cities, neighborhoods, subdivisions, et cetera, inside this campaign. And I'm going to lift that Calgary keyword out. I'm going to create a separate campaign for it to isolate that traffic. That's why you do that. Okay. So, so in the, in the separate campaigns, what I typically do is I take the, locations, blah, 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 all the kind of stuff. And I put it into this campaign, right? So this so is then, where, just so people understand, dude, this is where you would not use, I'm going to use LA. All right. So we're both in LA. This is where you wouldn't put like the big cities like Santa Monica, right? Or, or I'm going to give you Malibu as an example. You wouldn't use Malibu. You use the beaches here. You'd use like carbon beach. You'd use, um, Oh, shit, I can't even think of all the other beaches. But you know what I mean. This is where you <laughs> isolate all of them individually and not bring in the big names because the big name would eat up all the money here. Exactly right. Exactly right. right. Yeah, so you got to isolate those and put it into a sec separate campaign so you can control the budget, right? Mm -hmm. At the ad group level, what are you doing? I mentioned to you all of these keyword modifiers, right? So I've got Okotoks townhouses, Okotok real estate, Okotoks MLS, Okotok houses, Okotok homes, condos, etc. right? Why did I group all of these individually? Because I'm gonna run a different type of advertisement to each one of these groups, right? That's why I'm doing it. And I'm grouping it together because underneath townhouses, you're gonna see I have specific keyword, a group of keywords that all relate to townhouses. So I'm going to show them a townhouse keyword, right? The other level lever that you can pull at the ad group level is you can actually say within a campaign, let's say my overall campaign strategy is I want to get a cost per acquisition, a cost per lead of $8. But I really want to prioritize Okotoks townhouses because that's a specialization of mine, right? I can go here and I can actually say I will pay ten dollars versus eight dollars for Okotok townhouses because that is something i really value so there is micro bid adjustments that you can make within an ad group that you that that supersedes what you're doing at a campaign level got it okay so that's the second layer the third layer is keywords so if i click on Okotok's townhouses you're going to see here I have all of these keywords built out around that, right? I've got townhouses for sale, Okotok townhouses for sale, uh, Okotok's Alberta townhouses for sale, uh, Okotok's AB townhouses for sale. You know, I've got a total of 30, you know, 100 keywords here that are all variations of Okotok's townhouses, right? That was under that one ad group, right? Just one ad group, just one ad group. Right. And, and, you know, once again, the reason that I do that is because every single one of these keywords, I'm going to show the same exact advertisements too, because they're all related to Okotoks, you know, uh, homes or townhouses. Right. Yeah. 
So that's number one. Number two is that you'll notice for the same exact keyword, I, townhouses in Okotoks, Alberta, I'm going to run that three times. Um, you know, let me see if I can find some examples. So I, I can't unfortunately sort these in order. Just trust me when I say I'm going to run this three times, right? Okay. Why is that? Notice that some of these ads have brackets associated with it. Some of these have, you know, parentheses associated with it. And some of these have, uh, uh, you know, plus arrows associated with it. I, I don't see any examples here, right? And what that basically tells Google is I want to bid on these keywords in a couple of different ways. One way I want to bid on these keywords is if someone shows, key, uh, you know, bids on the keyword townhouses in Okotoks, Alberta, mm -hmm. I want to show up for that ad, right? But what if someone types in reduced priced townhouses in Okotoks, Alberta. That's not a keyword in here, right? But if I tell Google to do something called a phrase bid, phrase modifier, then, then what I'm saying is as long as the phrase townhouses in Okotoks, Alberta is in the keyword that someone types in a Google, show my advertisement, okay? Uh -huh. So there is something called a broad match an exact match and a phrase match and some variations in between like broad match modifier etc you can you can type in you know uh, uh, match types in google adwords if you want to see more examples or learn more about this subject right but in principle what you're basically telling google is what are the different circumstances when someone searches for a keyword relating to townhouses in Okotoks, Alberta, do I want to bid on? Okay, I won't, I won't spend too much time on this because this is uh, what I would call advanced PPC management, but uh, understanding how to do bid modifications is very important or, or, or uh, keyword modifications is very important long-term advanced style for you to know how all of this works. Is, okay? the, bracket, is the bracket the broad match? The bracket is, uh, I believe, exact match. Let's see. Yep, brackets is exact match. This is phrase match. And then there's something called broad, uh, broad modifier, which uh, is a plus arrows. Awesome. Yep. So this is the second layer, right? Which are, sorry, the third layer, which are the keywords. The fourth layer are the actual ads themselves, right? So if I click on the ads and extension section, you're going to see right here, this is the advertisement that I'm running. And you'll see Okotoks, townhouses, new listings for sale, update to MLS, blah, 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 blah. And every single keyword that we are running in Okotoks, we are showing the same exact ad to, right? And what's going to happen is you're going to get a really high click-through rate in aggregate for all of these keywords if you group them together well enough so that the advertisement is relevant to all these people, right? Love now, one, one common question I get asked is, why don't you, if you wanna get really specific, just create one ad group for one keyword to one ad, right? And, and what I would say to you is, you can do that, but, but you're gonna end up creating an optimization problem for yourself. Because remember, at the ad group level, you are controlling how you want to bid differently for each of those locations, right? Or each of those keyword groupings. And so instead of having right now on the ad group side, I have 42 ad groups, right? Check out how many keywords I have total. 150,000 keywords associated with these campaigns, right? Wow. If I had 115,000 ad groups, it's basically unmanageable, right? So you're going to want to make sure the taxonomy of what you're doing on the ad group level is correct so you can properly manage all of this stuff. This sounds like a lot of fun, dude. If you love data and you love, you know, analytics, this is, uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is an absolute, uh, you know, playground. If uh, that is not up your alley, hire someone else to do this for you. <laughs> oh, sure, dude. Oh, that's so good. All right, continue, dude. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, from here, 
uh, let me go back up to the ad, uh, you know, the campaign level, and let me talk about metrics and what's important from a metrics perspective, right? You know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of different metrics that you can look at, but at the end of the day, what I'm showing you right here is the most basic uh, 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 an analytics or metrics that you need to understand. Clicks is the number of uh, people or, or number of visits of, of people who have actually clicked on your advertisement, right? You pay Google based on every single time someone clicks on the ad. And so clicks is a really important metric. The second metric is impressions, right? Impressions is where how many times your ad actually appeared in front of someone, right? So if you divide clicks by, or impressions by clicks, you will get click-through rate, right? This is the percentage of people who saw your ad who actually clicked on it, right? Remember what I said, 5% is about average. So this campaign has about 6.21%. It is above average, right? Oh, wow. The, the next variable that's really important, and by the way, you, when you're on Google, you can highlight each of these and they're going to explain exactly what those metrics are, right? Yeah. The, the next best metric you're going to look at is your average cost per click. Now, this basically is the amount you are paying Google every single time someone clicks on the ad. Another important metric to know. Calgary, California, you know, the, the reason that we have such a, 15 cents is about as cheap as you can possibly get when it comes to cost per click on Google, right? For Tristan in his market, because he's bidding on keywords like homes for sale in Malibu, his cost per click is probably two and a half dollars, something in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? In Calgary, you know, um, uh, uh, because we are bidding at the neighborhood and subdivision level, we can get away with a really cheap cost per click, 15 cents is really crazy. Nationwide average, we're probably around 50 cents, right? Just to give you a little ballpark sense. I love that. And you get your cost per, per click by dividing the amount of money you spent by the number of clicks you've generated. That's it, right? Easy. Easy. The next uh, column is cost. Makes sense. This is how much you've spent. The next column is conversions, the number of leads you've generated, right? And then the last column is how much you're paying per lead, your cost per conversion, which is going to be your cost divided by your conversion. And for this client in Calgary, absolutely kicking ass, they're only at a $2.38 cost per conversion, right? Which is insane. That is insane, man. Uh, Tracy's got a question. What would the monthly spend end up being approximately on the Calgary campaign? Sure. It's basically an aggregate of all, all of these campaigns, which is $14.72 per day times 30. Wow. So, you know, about 400, uh, 450 bucks. Dude, that's killer. Yeah. For the amount of leads this person's getting, that's killer. <laughs> well, I picked a good campaign for us to look at, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but yes, I mean, this is a highly performant campaign. Now, if I were you, when I was look, if I were looking at metrics, right? At the end of the day, the metric that matters is your cost per conversion, right? Everything else doesn't matter because you can have a really low, you could have a 1% conversion rate, but if your cost per click is five cents, your cost per conversion, your cost per lead is going to be rock low. What do you care about all the other metrics, right? So at the end of the day, cost per conversion is the metric that is the uh, primary gold standard that you're looking, going to look at your campaign, right? But it, the, the metrics that you look at to assess is my cost per, uh, cost per lead good? My cost per co conversion good? You're going to look at a couple other metrics, right? The first metric you're going to look at is conversion rate, right? Because this is basically saying of 100 people coming to your website from Google, what percentage of them actually fills out a form that becomes a lead for you, right? And I would say a, a decent campaign hovers between 5 to 8% conversion rate, right? Got it. So if you get a 2% conversion rate, 3% conversion rate, that tells you there's a problem. You got to look at it, right? And it could be a myriad of problems. Well, if we have time, we'll talk about the different types of problems that you can encounter, right? But that's going to be your first tell to say something is wrong with my campaign, right? And like I said, nationwide average, you're looking at it between 5 to 8%. 8% is really good. 5% is probably average. Anything in between is going to be pretty good. The next variable you're going to look at is click-through rate, right? Because click-through rate dictates how 
you know, um, how effective your advertisement is for the keywords that you're bidding on, right? If you have an irrelevant ad or you're targeting the wrong keywords, your click rate is going to be very, very low. And the reason that click-through rate is so important is that the higher your click-through rate, the more Google says, this person knows what they're doing and they're bidding on the right keywords and they're doing better than the competition. So we're going to show those ads more. And not only are we going to show those ads more, we're going to let them win in the auction with a cheaper click. I love that, dude. That's pretty cool. Right? So the higher your CTR is going to be, you're going to notice your average cost per click is going to drop. Right? So, so those variables are very t closely tied together. And then what I would look at is clicks and I would look at conversions. And the main things I would look for there is, am I spending through on the, num on the money that I am investing, right? So in this client's case, like we said earlier, they're spending $14.72 per day, right? But in that same, this is, you know, one 30 day period, right? They spent $385. So, you know, I underspent on this campaign by about 70 bucks right? What that's telling me is, hey, I'm not bidding enough. If I want to spend 450 bucks, I'm going to need to up my bids because, you know, uh, right now with the bids that I'm using, $6, $8, whatever it is, I'm not able to capture all the traffic that's there, okay? So that's what the clicks and the costs, that's what the tells are around that. Now, if you click on the column button of, you know, Google here, you're going to see that they have literally hundreds of different values that you can associate, right? And if you're interested in the advanced levels of seeing what's going on, what's accurate, what's not, how do you optimize, you're going to want to deep dive into all of those, right? So if you Google metrics for conversion on Google AdWords, for instance, I'm sure you're going to find a lot of articles around that, right? There's some One, YouTube videos on that too, man. Yep, yep. A lot of great YouTube videos on that. I have you know, a question on this really quick from the yep. audience. Yep. Two different questions. Number one is for the conversion, what's the lead capture? Is it email, name, and phone or just email? Yeah, email, name, and phone. That's what a classic definition of a lead is. Perfect. And then the other question is, because this is all fun to look at, how much does it cost to set this up on YLOPO? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, uh, to do PPC on our system, uh, we charge essentially $7.95 a month um, and you get to spend... Um, you know, $600 on PPC advertisement. We'll manage $600 of PPC advertisement for you, $600 of Facebook social media advertisement for you, and $1,200 of dynamic remarketing for you, right? Which we can, totally different subject, we can talk about that. And so roughly speaking for $795, you know, with plus media, right? Plus dollars that you spend, you'll get somewhere around two to 300 leads. So it's typically a team that is working with us to do Google advertisement. I'd say if you were a single agent, you know, you probably couldn't handle that many leads. We could certainly still do Google advertisements for you, but you probably wouldn't want to spend 600 bucks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Especially with what you're doing and breaking it down so deep, you're yeah. going to get a lot more leads than you would somewhere else. So it makes sense, dude. All right. Uh, continue. You've got about 10 minutes. Just, I don't want to rush you, but you know, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, um, uh, I, I want to go over uh, a couple of other things in the dashboard, and then I'm going to kind of talk about, um, you know, what are the common gotchas when it comes to PPC advertisement, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, in this, Google has a lot of projection tools, right? One of the most important projection tools is it's going to tell you if your campaign is spending less dollars than it's capable of spending, right? So if you see this lever limited by budget, and you click on this button, Budget Explorer, mm -hmm. what Google is actually going to do is they're going to tell you, hey, we recommend that you spend $44 on this campaign. And if you did that, you're going to get 40 more leads per month, right? Or per week, rather. And your cost is only going to go up by 23 cents. But if you bid on $61 per month, you're going to get 50 leads, and your cost per conversion is going to go up by 76 cents right? So this is a really cool tool for you to, you to think about, okay, I've already gotten some success on Google. It's going really, really well. I want to spend more money on it, but what are the implications of that, right? Dude, Just click on that button. It tells you all that stuff. Dude, you got to show me that button on mine. 
(laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Anytime, man. I love that. All right, cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the other things that you can do on Google Analytics, or or, sorry, on Google AdWords is you can drill down and you can even do uh, uh, demographic and audience uh, targeting. Um, Audiences are where you can actually go through and you can edit, you know, um, let me click on audiences and I'll show you. This is the part while we're waiting for yours, this is the part that I use heavily on, on uh, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube uh, uh, targeting is a whole different, uh, you know, ball game. But, you know, Google actually allows you to drill into different demographics. So you can target people who are going to be most relevant for your advertising, right? So you can go down, you can say, I only want to target my ads to people who are parents of infants. Think about how specific that is, right? And then only those people who are parents of infants will see your advertisement, right? this This is just proof that it sucks to be in front of the media all the time because Facebook got their hand slapped, but Google's still going. Well, Google actually just had a uh, HUD uh, discrimination issue as well. And so a lot of these demographics are actually gone. So you can't target by, for instance, by age, you can't target by income. So there are different things that you can't target, but you can go in here and you can see all the different things you want to target. You have a lot more power in the demographic choices here than you do on Facebook. The Facebook just killed them all once you put housing in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, there are ways around that. We, we actually have a proprietary method to still target those on social, but you're absolutely right, Tristan. There are things that you can do on Google right now that you may not even be able to do on Facebook. So one of the, the favorites that we look at is home ownership status. So if you're interested in double dipping on a certain type of lead, you can only target people that Google thinks, now they don't know for sure, right, that, that they think are homeowners, right? So that's all in the audiences section. The next section, you know, that you're going to want to key in on is locations. If I click on locations, this is where for a particular campaign, I can actually tell them, remember, this is people looking in the state of, uh, or province of Calgary, looking for my keywords, right? So I can actually click on that. I can, uh, you know, I can add more locations. So I can actually do a map and I can say, I want to target Alberta, Canada, or I want to do a radius around Calgary. I want to target people in the United States looking for Calgary homes for sale. You have all of that ability and you can even exclude locations. So for the campaigns that we've set up, for instance, Calgary CA, Havre, right? This campaign is targeting people in the state of, or province of, or sorry, in the country of Canada who are uh, uh, searching for Calgary homes for sale, excluding people in the city of Alberta, Canada. Nice. Or in, in the, uh, sorry, the province of Alberta, Canada, right? So you can kind of have a lot of fun or have a lot of testing around what works and what doesn't work, right? Yeah. So, so those are just some examples of all of the targeting you can do. You can go crazy with the amount of targeting you can do. You can set the schedule when you want ads to run. You can say, I want my ads only to run from morning to afternoon. I only want to run ads from 6 to 8 p.m. You can modify your bids to say, when someone is searching in the morning, I want to bid lower than when someone's searching for the evening, right? You can adjust device level bidding. You can say, I want to pay less money for someone who's searching on their iPad versus someone who's searching on their desktop. You know, more money for people who are looking on their Phone versus people who are searching on you know, iPad, you can do all that kind of stuff as well. And, and sure. guess what? There's reporting around all of this stuff, right? Can you target people who are using an iPhone versus Android? Because, you know. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's yep. beautiful. Let's talk about that. Not right now. I'm saying you and me separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, look, you know, you, you can go down and you can target the nth degree on, on Google if you have a smaller budget, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't drill down that much, right? Once you have the campaign structure right, ad group structure right, keywords and ads, you know, you pretty much cover the basics. Your campaign is going to do fine, right? If you are spending $100,000 a month on PPC, all of those levers are really important, right? So it just depends on the depth of campaign that you are running. I love it, dude. I love, dude, we could have gone for like 
I think we could go for like a whole day on this. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So anything to wrap up and then I'll, I'll remind everybody to jump on our, on our 2.01 in three weeks. Sure. You know, um, if you are looking for tools that you are like audit my account, but I don't want to pay a lot of money for it. Right. Um, you know, I recommend looking at a website called WordStream. They have a blog a section on their site, which is fantastic. They have a lot of articles for beginners and a lot of articles for different tips and tricks. Another one is called SEO land S or, uh, uh, S SEO land, right? That's another one. There's yeah. a lot of great blogs out there that educates you. There's also something called a Google AdWords certification. That is a set of courses. This is completely free. WordStream costs money, right? But it's completely free. Um, and it will take you through a course step-by-step -step of how to run AdWords. And then you get a certification that says, you know what you're doing, right? So if you were a beginner and you wanted to really learn all of this stuff, I recommend reading blog articles and getting your Google AdWords certification. Dude, I love that. And so everybody jump on, on stream. That's beautiful. A, qu a couple of questions before we wrap up here. I put up the link to our next webinar on Google 2.0, which is not what we touched on today. Uh, and the next one is if you have any questions about how to run these ads or if you want YLOPO to run them, I'm putting up YLOPO's link, which is not that hard. It's YLOPO.com. Real easy. Because you guys have such a unique name. That's why. Uh, no competition. Cool. Any other questions? No, I'm just wrapping up there. Good. Uh, here's the questions for you. Uh, is there a way to research locations where keywords searches are more popular, like a heat map? You know, um, the one that I would recommend is if you, there is a tool that Google released called Google Trends, right? On Google Trends, what you're able to do is, for instance, I can type in the keyword Los Angeles homes for sale, right? Mm-hmm. And then I can actually look at how popular is this keyword right now, right? And what's interesting is you'll see here, there was a dip in traffic in March because of COVID, right? And then now traffic has been roaring back. And, you know, across June, it has basically been as high as historically it's ever been, which is telling me that people are starting to look for real estate again at a very high level, which is great. Right? You, right? But on this tool, you can actually see where are people looking for this keyword? Oh, okay. So California is obviously number one. That makes sense. But you've got Nevada, New York, you know, Arizona, L Louisville. You can even go into the sub areas to see what's going on there. Right? You can see related topics. So you can break that out, related queries of what people are typing in. And then you can drill down into the individual uh, uh, states uh, that people are searching for, timeframes, categories, a bunch of stuff, right? So Google has a keyword tool as well, but um, you know that keyword tool I find will be less effective if you're looking for trends like what you're asking for. Google Trends usually is the better tool I would advocate for. I love it, man. All right, well, thanks so much, everybody. And obviously, G runs Ylopo along with the, his whole team out there. You may have heard of Howard. Howard Tager, he jumps on a few times here with us. But gee, thanks so much, dude. I loved it, man. I, I already have some ideas on what we're going to do next after Google 2.0. Maybe building out a simple Google ad so people can see how, how to build one, right? 100%. Howard. Yeah, we can definitely awesome. go through that. Cool, man. Thanks All so right, much for your time. Be safe out there, buddy. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.